I'm good. I'm good. Like basking in the sun here. Like a lot. Gee, I wish oh. we have um, a thunderstorm happening here. So it's very. If you hear thunder, that's what that is. I tried okay, to put headphones great. in. Just bring yeah. down the drama. Exactly. So, it's a little ambiance. So let let's get the show started. So, okay, I'm listening. Uh, well, welcome everybody to the ninth episode of Morse Codes by Vesa. Clearly, I'm Vesa. I'm the crazy <laughs> uh, Finnish located in London fashion stuff and art director and uh, I have a very special guest for all of you today. Uh, I'm super honored and happy to introduce to you all Merlot, the fabulous singer who is doing his <laughs> first ever live ever in yep. this earth. My very first one. I, I know. Forgive me if I make mistakes and everything. No, I've... don't worry. Like it's this is all about being real and there's no mistakes in in my world. So could you please tell everybody who you are, what you do, and where are you Morse coding today? Um, okay, so I'm Merlot. Yes, I'm a musician, uh, like you just mentioned. Um, I uh, normally reside in New York, but currently I'm in Florida right now, so I'm Morse coding from Florida. Um, yeah, I'm staying with family for a little bit until things kind of calm down and it's, you know, safer to go back to New York, but I miss everyone so much, all my nightlife family. Um, I wouldn't call myself a club kid by any means, but I definitely um, have a huge family in nightlife, and so my heart goes out to New York. Um, but yeah, I'm in Florida right now, and I'm a musician, above all. Yeah, uh, like I said to everybody before you joined in, so I have pinned uh, your fabulous, fabulous music video and your song, <laughs> Bad For You, so it's you can see it on the pinned comments. So when you have the time, go and have a ch uh, check it out. Like I've been your fan ever since I, that music video uh, hit the market, I, and I'll be like, wow. thank you, thank you, know, you it's, thank it's you. Still, it's still one of my like go-to like references from from uh, this whole decade. So <laughs> you know, I'm I'm yeah. like a massive, massive fan. So I appreciate um, it. Like no, no, honor is all mine. <laughs> so as you said, like you are isolating with with your family. Um, mm -hmm. So. Uh, what is the what is the difference like uh, currently for you in between New York and California? Like, what was yeah. the reason that you uh, like went directly to your family when when so called this shit hit the fan? I mean, I think that just once it started getting really real, I knew that I was lucky to have a place to go, um, and so I came back just because I didn't. I don't know. I feel like New York is it's a city. Obviously, I'm in Florida right now, and it's very not small town but pretty much a small town um so there's just not dense population it's much easier to avoid people and um you know <laughs> contagion in general um so yeah i mean i just knew that it was going to be a lot safer than like taking the subway all the time or even ubers and ride chairs um and as much as i miss my friends and everybody there i just was lucky enough that i could come back to pretty much just my mom. It's not really my, my whole family, but it's just me and my mother. And so, yeah, it's just much, um, much more simple, like slow pace of life here. Um, I can drive everywhere. I obviously didn't have a car in New York. So being able to drive and sanitize the car and like, you know, uh, just kind of pop in and pop out of grocery stores, like, like don't have to really make contact with anyone um, where I knew that wouldn't be possible in New York. And also my Apartment's much smaller than <laughs> my mother's yeah. house, so yeah, it's, that's it's sure. that's nice sure. to kind of come back and have space. Yeah, the big, yeah. City, big city life. I can, um, I consider myself lucky, you know, living with my partner. We have our own place, but I have yeah. so many friends here in London who are like, you know, in good and bad, like cramped in, like with like five flatmates, yeah, in a small room. And if 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 one of you is still working, you know, as a frontline worker, you know, has to kind of like isolate. Yeah. Time everything, so I'm I'm definitely like uh, all pro. Like go and see families, get some space. But um, how has this affected 
you as a person <laughs> and your work. Obviously, like, you know, we, we love music, we hear it everywhere, but you know, the mm-hmm. performance element, like you said, that you miss your, your night, nightlife family and all of that. So how is that affecting you now? Well, it definitely affected, um, I mean, the music industry as a whole. Uh, I mean, I'm still planning on releasing new music very soon. Um, I'm not putting anything on pause as far as music releases go. Um, but it, it, you know, I had a lot of plans, uh, not very specific, I won't go into specifics, but pretty much anything with touring or performances in any capacity, um, you know, have just been put on hold until completely further notice. Like nobody really knows when um, we'll be able to gather in real life, you know, uh, in that capacity again. And so I think that just like pretty much everybody in the music industry uh, that was kind of hoping for festivals and things like that, I'm just kind of taking it day by day and I'm just paying attention to what uh, I guess the government is going to regulate. Um, and I, I don't know, I'll just see, especially I really wanted to uh, look into touring in the UK yeah, and things like that. And so I know that it, it might be different than the laws are in America. So I'll just have to kind of keep an eye on everything as far as like the whole world goes because I didn't want to just perform in America the whole time. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that music is really special because it has the power to bring everybody together. And that's kind of like the point anyway, is to, um, I don't know, make current music about the times and make it healing or things like that. So I definitely still have plans to drop music very, very soon um, with visuals. And I also have a special project I'm going to be working on, um, which is kind of an interactive um, musical thing that I'm super excited about, but I'll oh, be doing that really soon. Yeah. Sounds yeah, I'm, so I'm very exciting. I'm you very excited. You, you don't even know, like, you, you just uh, telling about all of that. Like, I, I just said to my boyfriend that I'm reaching now the point that I just want to put, put on my boots, go and dance, you know, see people, mm-hmm. you know, whatever has to do with that, it, it doesn't involve my house. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, because, I know like, exactly. Because I'm a person that I can't, like, I've said on the previous life, like, I can't drink, even though I have liquor in the house, but I can't <laughs> drink unless I can have a kiki, you know, yeah. dance, and, you know, you know, have some decadence in my life. So I'm definitely, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward for, for this to be lifted. But mm-hmm. uh, how is it in, in the America? Like the latest, latest thing that I saw that, you know, America is starting to like open up a lot faster than the rest of the world. Like I, I, I read yeah. something about like La, uh, Las Vegas being opening soon, which well, is so really crazy. The, I don't, I don't think it is, but the, I forget if it's the mayor or the governor or whatever, uh, the mayor is, the city um, is trying to open it. She basically suggested that she wants to reopen the casinos and the hotels and everything. And I, part of me understands that her economy is probably failing, but so is everyone's. Like I know that Las Vegas' entire market depends on humans being out and about, <laughs> like that's the entirety of it, gambling and the hotels and the casino, all of that. Um, but no, it's no, it's not safe yet. And it's not smart. And I think that, it'll make the second wave way crazier. But I think that one of the things about, um, it's very specific to America is it, we're kind of used to having a certain amount of freedoms and not being told what to do by the government that a lot of other countries, maybe not the UK specifically, but I know a lot of countries were used to sitting and looking at other countries to be the example of like not having the same freedoms that we do. And so we're so accustomed to just like running around wherever we want, saying whatever we want, like being able to kind of go out and do things at our leisure all the time. And so I think that having that uh, taken from us for like uh, the first time in my lifetime, I guess it's, I mean, I think it's like the first time in my mom's lifetime that anything like this yeah, has happened. As well. it's yeah, crazy. it's so unprecedented. So I'm not shocked that we're like the country that's pushing back the hardest on these restrictions and maybe not taking them as seriously because it is like, uh, so unusual to have our lives like dictated this way and so i'm um i'm not surprised but i also don't support it i think that people still should stay inside obviously the numbers are getting worse pretty much i mean obviously as testing comes out and more you know tests are available you're just going to find more people that have it but um no i think in general uh i would say to everyone watching (laughs) please continue to stay inside because it's crazy. I have so many friends that have had it or their family members have had it. And 
Thankfully, I don't know anyone that has passed um, yet, but I also have just heard that it's terrible. It's a really not something that you want, and it's not something that's fun to deal with. Um, it's just stressful, and it's very, very contagious. So I don't, you know, I don't wish it on anybody. And so I hope that everyone in the little individual states will uh, continue to <laughs> enforce people to stay inside and not reopen. Yeah, because because <laughs> like because here in the UK we had like massive, massive peak, and it seems to be now that we're going down. Like for example, like yesterday was the first Thursday since this whole. Um, things started that it, it, it's starting to go down like the death rate is going down yeah. which, which can be an indication that okay like we are since like now a good month in being on lockdown and literally locked in our houses it seems to be working but you yeah. know obviously it's still we are all going through this even the scientists and so so whatnot but like today i read about that like natural cause of this virus that it could be like about 70 days that it will just die out by itself yeah. it's like the sort of course because the weather is getting warmer mm -hmm. well, i hope so that's yeah. the thing i mean i think that was one of the reasons that um like even africa was one of the last places to uh show up with um like you know rates of the virus i think that i read a lot about it uh dying down in the warmer weather because i know in a lot of places it's still snowing right now um I mean, I'm in Florida where it's super, super warm, but um, <laughs> I I hope so. I just hope that I hope that we can move past it, even if it does die down. I hope that we can move past um, into the next phase of our lives, being more mindful and maintaining some sort of um, maybe not always social distancing for like the rest of our lives, but I mean, uh, taking better cleaning habits with us, taking better steps. To sanitize things and be more mindful about all of the things that we touch all the time and how close we stand to people i think that um yeah i think that's something that we could take with us whether or not the virus just like instantly dies down i think that it's really has been at least a time to reflect on um personal space and how much but i do i miss hugging everyone and i miss dancing but you know i'm also like probably for the rest of my life gonna wash my hands every 20 minutes regardless of what i've touched <laughs> so that's like <laughs> you know what i mean so we'll see yeah. yeah yeah i think i think that like what like all of my previous guests have said as well i was just about to ask you before you answered my question about like what mm -hmm. you think as the sort of positives coming out of this is the sort of thing it's like maybe slowing down a bit like maybe yeah. enjoying you know producing great stuff whether it's fashion music you know, enjoying the moment rather than always chasing chasing up the next one. Because yeah. I feel like in my industry, it's just constantly it's been like speeding up to be the next one, next one, next one, next one. It's like you do one thing and it's already out of the door. Yeah. It's kind of like what's the point, really? And yeah. uh, and like I had like a small brief phone conversation with you about that prior, even the music artist, that you know you would have the momentum that could take up to years you know yeah before you so you kind of like harness your craft and you know you know live a little live a little of life so you have something to actually say to the public in your yeah life. so uh, how do you see this like um affecting your creative process have you have you have, has it has it like revoked something you your... know i i think that i've just had to as far as my creative process i think that i've, I've just had to take some steps back and kind of rethink the way that I, because I was thinking so far in the future, like most of my thoughts were so not in the moment, you know, especially most musicians would probably tell you that like, you're constantly thinking, like you just said about the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And so I think that I've just had to like kind of stop <laughs> and self-reflect, think about like what I can do in the moment uh, is, without thinking of touring and without thinking of like, oh, when I can fly over here and film this music video or when I can, get a team of people to shoot this photo shoot so i think that um yeah i think that it's a better for me because i think that i'll be able to focus more on musical creativity at least in this time um and coming up with different unconventional ways to kind of create content around the music itself instead of like having a bunch of hands on deck to assemble a photo shoot or stylists or you know i think that um and that could be for better or for worse it's definitely going to be challenging for me I can't, I'm like eager to kind of keep working 
on things and see um, exactly where it goes. But I know that I had you know plans for different visuals that I'm um, kind of just are indefinitely on hold. So I'm uh, kind of turning inward to see what I can do on my own and through like internet collaborations maybe might be an alternative that, um and yeah i think that having more time to be uh, uh, sorry no no there don't worry go. i was like just like don't cut off Continue. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i think that it'll maybe give me more time and space to just like simmer in the studio i think a lot of times i was just thinking about the content and like moving on to the next thing and what the future would hold but now I think that, um, yeah, it might be nice to just kind of be able to sit and just create in new ways. I'm probably going to try to teach myself a lot more about production. I know that when I make my own music, I always have a producer in the room helping me with the production and marking my vocals down and you know recording the, the stuff. I don't do it all alone. It's always been a collaborative effort. Um, so now I think that maybe I'll have to learn some of these things and uh, be able to fend for myself in like a small maybe bedroom studio setup so that's definitely something that's going to be uh different but cool okay, i think yeah, that's I, I, I think it's like i can i can tell you it's like it, it, it sounds so so difficult but it really isn't yeah it's almost like it's it's sort of like this the, the program side of it but if you yeah. you know i'm sure i don't know if you work with like programs of like logic pro x and you know this type yeah of, so it's, it's just pretty much like learning just the software and yeah. then then kind of rediscovering like the the fun of it yeah uh, i'm such a bad computer person i'm like a horrible millennial i really am just <laughs> terrible at punk, like working computers i don't know why but yeah it's something i need to but that's now i have all the time in the world to learn yeah. how I to can i can definitely relate to that because i'm uh, uh you know I, I i remember the times without even the smartphones and oh, i yeah. kind of like try to you know avoid that but hey you know sometimes you just have to kind of adapt and then make um, yeah. uh, coming back to what you just said, like me discovering you as a music artist, like your your first single, "Bad for You," still mm -hmm. resonates to me as a as a timeless piece. Uh, Thank you. And, and that's that's what I I personally, in my own own work, like um, strive towards is to not to be trend conscious, to create mm -hmm. some like images that can be relevant to the models, to the creative team, to myself in my book in, in 10 years, 20 years time. Mm -hmm. So it's like, instead of like pushing out a lot of this sort of crap that is just current now and then it's completely pointless. Mm -hmm. What What is the backstory? How did you end up being a singer? Because if your first single to me is one of my like literally top 20, you know, party songs and stuff that I, I appreciate it. play, you know, my own personal like you know playlist thank so, you thank you you know like i'm, I'm, I'm sure it's, it, it feels weird for you to no I, I it's i'm very thank you so i really appreciate it so, um so that's what i would like to hear like the, the backstory like how did that all happen because i felt for the for for somebody's debut to be so ready i was just like how the <laughs> where where is this person coming from because i was uh, on the way thank you i mean I definitely will say it's um it it there was a lot of i guess a lot of backstory i think that um you know a lot of people look at a debut and they think that it's just a first effort and for me i had gone through so much um well i guess to go far back i mean i had sung a long time i had uh, competed in shows and talent shows and everything um all throughout being a kid i was in choirs my entire life um and i learned saxophone i think which informs a lot of my songwriting um, when I was like in the sixth grade. So I was always in a band, always in a choir, always singing, um, then went to Berklee College of Music. Um, but I started making my own music in a studio, like I would say a little bit in Berkeley. I was working in like some of the school's studios and in like people's you know dorm rooms and things, recording and writing my own songs. Um, but for, for real, for real, when I moved to New York when I was 19, um, I got in touch with some people through friends of friends, my good friend Lillian, um, uh, took me into a studio and I started doing sessions with some different producers and that's when I really started trying to hone in my craft um, but yeah that was like about two good years of writing and fleshing out songs and coming up with ideas and working with different producers and then in 2017 like early 2017 is when I landed on Bad For You and started writing it Get in my yes and then 
Yes, so early uh, 2017, I started writing Bad For You and then I didn't even release it until January of 2018. So it, it was definitely not like the first song I made. It was not even one of the first like 10 ideas that I came up with. And I took pieces of other songs and you know tried to put them together. And I don't, I feel weird kind of talking about it as if it's like a magnum opus. It really, it, I thank you. I, I, it's like a fun little dance track. Um, but I think that to, to you know bring your point of uh, the timelessness aspect, I think that um, you know as, as queer people, we have never been the norm. And so I don't I think that I've just had the tradition of not looking to the outside or the trends. I've, that's always just been imparted in me because I maybe never always saw myself represented anyway. So I always looked inward to kind of find, n like, not just what would set me apart, but what was true to myself. And so I don't, I think that, yeah, following the trends has just never been in my DNA or really a lot of people I know's DNA because it already isn't what is the mass representation anyway. So I think that um, it's, it's been a goal I guess of mine, but also something that maybe would come a little bit easier to someone who is non-binary all over the place, like queer person growing up in adversity, um, to kind of create something that steps outside of just the top forty kind of. But, but to be honest, like I, I, I see it, I see it like already that you have done that because. Thank you. If, if you think about it, like that you, like you said that if you release the track in in January two thousand eighteen. I mm -hmm. was I was then living in Madrid, you know. Oh, wow. and com yeah, and completely like you know, uh, detached for for the life that I knew. But for me, I I found your image and in the songs. I used to be a professional dancer, so I'm super anal oh. when it comes to melodies and beats. If you don't have those, it's shit. You know, like, yeah. right. you know, like I don't yeah. care. I don't care who you are and where you came from, or you're Mariah or Whitney. But if, if you don't have those, it, you know. I hear you. So, so for, for me, obviously, those the hooks. There's like more than one hook. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm I'm done. But to me, how I saw the whole image was that you were the first one, as the type of like what I would say mainstream queer artist, that created something that is that I was like, okay, I'll I'll I can take this seriously because I I, I find that as a gay person and being part of the the sort of um, the sort of queer community, a lot of the, the people outside, they just see the sort of glitz and glamour, so they don't take it as serious. Mm -hmm. If you know what I mean, versus a very heteronormative artist. Yeah. Even I though, do think it, yeah. Even, even though, like, the, the mainstream music industry, they copy a lot of the stuff from the queer culture and make it mainstream. But it, yeah. it's happened so many times that you've seen an artist. That yeah. is part of the queer community and they're not taken serious and when i saw so you smack across my screen i was like fucking finally <laughs> someone has arrived and, and I, oh. ever ever since i've been your like your, your biggest fan to be honest well, I and appreciate i don't fan it. a lot of people <laughs> i appreciate it i mean i would be remiss if i didn't you know also mention that aside from looking inward to create my own sound and music i think that i was super inspired by other queer artists that i like when I was um, in high school, I don't want to say younger because I was young when I put it out. But when I was like in high school, I mean, I looked up to so many people. A lot of um, hip hop artists were the first ones that I took seriously. Like, uh, and I don't make hip hop, you know, music. I mean, sometimes I have hip hop inspired beats and some things. But um, I definitely I took like uh, Kicks to Killa and Mickey Blanco, um, and you know, even DJs like Juliana Huxtable were artists that I saw and I was inspired by and I saw, you know, the black queer representation. And so I I I kinda I understand there's like that that first artist that you'll see and you'll be like I I get it. Like it kinda clicks and that reminds me of myself. So I mean I'm glad that I could be that for some people. I know that it's still you know, we're moving towards more and more representation and finally I think that um the industry is getting is getting hip to the fact that we are trendsetters and we are, you know, amazing talents. And they're finally allowing us um, a platform and money 
I think that yeah. a lot of times the reason things that are you know, queer or whatever aren't taken as seriously to heteronormative communities is because they aren't funded. They aren't given the same platform. They aren't given the resources to be as legitimate. And it's not because the artist is less talented or the whatever, it's because they're not given the same platform and and just things to, to shine. Like I know that so many people can. And I think that that's been a struggle, a little bit of mine is kind of, um, you know, being taken seriously just because I am othered, you know? And it's something where sometimes, you know, the music doesn't even matter to, I, I'm not gonna like name labels or anything, but yeah, like yeah, the music yeah. doesn't matter. And it's, it's harder for queer people, and especially if you're black and queer uh, on top of that, to be taken seriously. And so I hope that I can help push that forward and that conversation forward and be representation for other people to know that, you know, there is queer, like the QPOC talent out yeah, there. Yeah, because, yeah because, because I think a lot of, lot, of, lot of the public who consume popular culture, pop music, they don't, they think that uh, everything happens overnight. You know, like yeah. somebody becomes a overnight success, it does not happen. You know, yeah. the road is long. And how many mm -hmm. times these amazing people say to themselves, you know, like, fuck this, I'm not going to do this. You know, like, yeah. I, I can't live out of my car or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And plus, plus the fact that it's not even about necessarily about the talent. It's about the machinery yeah. behind it. There's so many talented singers currently who are mm -hmm. doing pop records and they can't even, they're not even allowed to use their whole repertoire in the way yeah. that they can sing. Just because it's considered not sellable or mm -hmm. to this or to that. And mm -hmm. that's, that's always been something that I, I'm, I'm very real and I want everybody to know, you know, that it's, you can't say that, A, this artist is shit because this person is not on on the uh, whatever charts. Billboard type of thing. It's not yeah. even up to, most of the times, it's not even up to that, you know, because there's yeah. a lot of politics and this goes across the, the mainstream uh, creative industry, unfortunately. Yeah. And I think that it takes a village all of the time. I think that a lot of people maybe think that it's a, it's up to you to become famous and get access and get all these things. But it, it, no matter who you're looking at or talking about, um, it takes a collaboration and tons of hands in the pot to uh, come up with, you know, things that will be taken seriously. And I think that it's, yeah, just kind of sometimes more difficult for queer people of color to get all of those hands because it is it takes a machine to you know like you said yeah, like and, to, and what i find which is so frustrating to me to witness uh is, is the fact that when you actually voice it out then you're automatically made into that angry mm -hmm. fucking bitch mm -hmm. <laughs> i know it's it's and like, it's like the, the curse yeah. you can't really talk about it yeah because you don't want to mm -hmm. yeah, it's wrong well uh from that like uh are you are you currently are you under a label or are you independent? Um, I'm independent from a label currently. Um, I do have a publishing deal. Uh, so I'm very lucky, I'm very blessed um, that I get access to studio time. It's difficult now because I you know, can't go fly to LA and record music with people. <laughs> but um, uh, I am very lucky, So, but I don't have a label. So um, I would love to, um, I, I'm open to it, obviously. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it definitely takes a lot of resources to create things. I know a lot of times people are like, where's the new music, where's the new music? And I know I've kind of sporadically released things, but it, it is very, uh, it's a community effort <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. And, yeah. um, it, it takes a lot more. I mean, I'm, I know people that are really super talented and they can sit and make amazing things in their bedroom by themselves and, you know, but I think, um, yeah, it's, it's once you get past the point of once you start working and collaborating with other people and songwriters as well as different producers um yeah it takes it takes time and it's definitely like i mean i'm sitting on so many songs right now that i'm super excited to release but i'm i want to be strategic about yeah, yeah, yeah. releasing the music i want to do it on my own time and make sure that everyone involved is happy with the product um and yeah and and kind of gearing up those resources to create stunning visuals and 
working with amazing like I'm I've just uh, I finished a music video recently and I'm super excited about uh, but I got you know the pleasure of working with amazing stylists and amazing um, videographer Matt Sparks I'm super excited for everyone to see this video it's coming out very soon um, but yeah I I it is a community effort and it's kind of, it's difficult to kind of get those things together but it's I think it's rewarding to kind of have that collaborative experience and um, and work with different people but yes it is a long road it is not an overnight thing I know it's it's kind of difficult sometimes for consumers to understand that too I have so many DMs like do you still make music I'm like yes I promise it's coming I, I promise <laughs> um, but yeah especially now I it, it's difficult but I say all that to say yes, there's new music coming very soon as well. Hey, and now it's like I think this is a this is a good reset. Like, um, mm -hmm. I don't I don't necessarily see this this whole whole thing, even though it's so horrible as a, as a whole. But I I, I find it is a good good way to like for us to reset and realize mm -hmm. you know you don't have to constantly produce something because it's 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 a yeah. it's a Ferris wheel that you can't keep up. The yeah. more you do, the more you build up this sort of stuff. Even in like, like smaller trivial things. You know, I am a I'm a person who is an overachiever in my own head. Like I don't compete <laughs> yeah. against anybody else, just with myself. And sometimes mm -hmm. I just say to myself, like, listen, you know, if you don't do this X Y Z now, twenty four hours in a row, it's okay. You know, the world's yeah. not going to come to an end. Yeah. So, so in that sort of sense, like I'm I'm looking forward for you to marinate in all of this greatness <laughs> that is about to come out. Well, well, sooner or later. But how does mm -hmm. a uh, the new normal day of Merlot look like on a daily basis? Oh my goodness! How do, how, how do you how do you roll? I I mean it's it's kind of it's one of those things where it's been a little bit different, kind of going in deeper to the quarantine days. You know, because there was that first kind of like couple of weeks where no one really knew what was going on or what was going to happen. And I think that that looks much different now than me knowing that we're going to be hunkering down for quite a bit um, and making strategic plans for the future. Um, so now I would say at this point, I'm, um, you know, I still try to wake up at a decent time. I feel like it's, it's kind of difficult where you don't have to go outside or do anything, but I'm trying to maintain some type of appropriate sleep schedule. Um, so I'm trying to wake up at an appropriate time. I usually try to do a little bit of yoga or exercise in the morning. I know um, there's no gyms that are open, so I sometimes <laughs> I go for, yeah, like I was on the phone with you yesterday and I took like, probably I was walking like the entire time. So it was like a two mile walk around my neighborhood, which again, you can't really do in New York. So I'm very lucky that I can just leave my house and walk for like a mile or two and not see anybody else. <laughs> um, there's, there's no people. So that's kind of fun. And then I have a lot of phone calls with my management and um, different people that I've worked with and different things that I'm trying to set up um, and get different songs under wraps. I had different plans before quarantine. Uh, I was going to um, release one of the more sad songs <laughs> that I had after my next music video. And yeah. at this point, I'm kind of like, I don't really think anybody's looking for that right now. Maybe it is relatable, but I, I want to kind of pay that song respect at a time where I think that it is what the world needs. And so I'm kind of, so I'm switching around vibes a little bit. Um, so yeah, I think that it's just now uh, a day of kind of strategy and planning and, and then I might have a cocktail <laughs> at the end of it all. Yeah, it's, it's, well, the week, it's the weekend, like, uh, like, uh, like yes. it matters any, anymore. I feel like, you know, <laughs> the only the only thing what I've like literally like mastered is making pancakes and eating mm -hmm. them. So I don't know, oh, I don't yeah. know what I'm going to come out, out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Not That's the thing. Clothes, clothes, you know, I know, I've learned how to cook a lot more. I used to order out everything and now I am definitely have to learn how to cook um it's it's been very fun me and my mother have been just experimenting with brand new things we'll go grocery shopping and just get stuff that we would have never eaten or tried to make before and that's kind of come up with new it, yeah it's fun it's I, I don't know how long i'll keep that up because it is I don't, I don't know i'm not i'm not a very good cook i'll just put it that way so but it's yes. fun to experiment you know it, it, it's tough to waste groceries but it, it's it's very fun to kind of try to make new things. I've been trying like um, different curry dishes. I always have loved like Thai curry and Indian curry. And so I've been trying to make different things, but 
they don't always come out like they do at the restaurant. So it's, it's been <laughs> well, kind of difficult. You know, like, nobody nobody is, a, is a master when they're born. So yeah. everything you can learn. <laughs> um, exactly. Just a big uh, shout out to like all of the viewers. Um, we are now about halfway. So if you have any questions for Merlot, send it to the question box there. I have already received a lot of uh, free questions, but just in case. Oh, okay. Uh, if somebody's watching because you know how it is people come and go yeah. you know uh, so and so forth so I want to keep it like fresh um, what do you like or love the most in your work? in my personal work? Um, do you mean about my work or like the process? no but like the, the reason like like um, I, I, I'm not looking for some sort of cookie cutter answer. Just the reason, like, why you still do what you do. Because I know as a creator, how many mm -hmm. times we go through the path and the path goes up like that, and you're like, fuck, yeah. I need to do another detour. Yeah. What, what keeps you going? <laughs> I, I think that I'm, I'm such a dreamer. I think I'll, to give you a non conventional answer, I've always been uh, just in love with the thought of like dreaming things into fruition. And I think that being able to make nothing out of like into something is so special to me. Um, ever since I was a kid, I would just daydream about what my tour would look like, literally. Like, like I, I was in like, I was like 10 years old thinking about what my stage would look like and what the dancers would be wearing. And I think that like, I will not rest until I see those things into fruition. I think that going into a studio and making literally nothing and you know coming up with different sounds and and collaborating with people and coming up with lyrics and stories and i i'll never not have something to say you know what i mean i'll never not have something to dream up into fruition i think that's so special to kind of create things from the, the bottom up and that process for me is very exciting it's like my livelihood i love dreaming up things and making them happen and i just so happened to do that with my voice and with visuals and photo shoots and things that's like my medium um, but i always have appreciated you know in all art respects and like whether that be like movies i i love like if i love a movie i'll go watch the director talk about how he came up with everything and you know how the script was written and how the cast i love just the creative process i, I am just glad that i have the medium to express myself through music and i love coming up um, you know, with, with concepts and with ideas and I, I think it's so much fun. That's kind of what keeps me going because it's what I'm good at. It's like the only yeah, thing that yeah, I'm, yeah. I, you know, at this point I'm not, I'm not great at doing a lot of other stuff. So I, hopefully I can keep dreaming and make it a living for forever. But I love that other people also enjoy uh, consuming what I dream of. I think that's really uh, special so and validating. It's very exciting. To, and, and to, yeah. to be honest, like I, I kind of see that the, the creative, creative industries have been so underestimated for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, all of the cuts have always gone towards the arts or, you know, creative mm -hmm. education. But now I feel like that exactly what what you do and what we do as creatives is going to be the one that's going to be the high demand. You know, I would be more mm -hmm. interested about hearing three new tracks from you at the moment then seeing what what, what Dior or Burberry is going to put out on there or whatever <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. because uh, yeah. because at least at least some like music it's it's something that you can feel it can take you to places it can make you think mm -hmm. about things but that goddamn code ain't going to do nothing for me <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean I mean I totally use music to uh, kind of travel a little you know what I mean it takes me out of myself it's been what's holding me completely together and saying, uh, not my own music just, but you know, I, I don't know if you're familiar with them. Uh, Rina Sawayama, she just uh, released, she's uh, British, um, and she just released uh, a new album like last Friday and it has kept me so good. I And I kind of get that feeling. It's like that I, I can dream when I listen to, you know, her music, but a lot of music uh, especially, but it takes you to different places and it tells you different stories and it, I think especially if we're gonna be quarantined for a long time, I think that it's gonna be important to have that ability to let your imagination kind of go and remove yourself from, you know, the, the bedroom that you're stuck in or whatever. I think that the arts will prevail in that way because it has that power to kind of transport you elsewhere when we're not allowed to transport 
at the moment. <laughs> and, and also, like, I, 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 I say a lot that, you know, being creative doesn't mean that you have to a, produce a, a fashion shoot or music. You can be creative of finding solutions mm -hmm. to problems. You know, that's also being creative. Uh, so whoever yeah. you're finding a solution in that sense, <laughs> you know, keep, keep it up. Yeah, um, <laughs> keep up for good work. What what is the the biggest thing that you miss from the good old days, and what mm. is something that you are so looking forward to see go away? Um, I miss people. I'm a people person. I mean, it's a generic answer, but I really, really miss. Um, I love talking to strangers, not like on the street, but like I love, <laughs> like in, that's why I kind of enjoy nightlife so much. I love making new friends. I mean, I, I moved to New York. Um, not knowing a single person. I did not have any friends in New York. I was a personal assistant for someone, so I didn't even have co-workers. It was just me and another woman. And so I literally had all of this, every person I know, like at all this music came to fruition from just running around and talking to people and meeting people. And, you know, and like that is my like lifeblood. I love just human interaction, face to face, like just talking to people and getting to know people and people watching. And so that's definitely something that I miss the most um, because obviously if I moved to a new state in the current state that we're in, I couldn't meet anybody <laughs> or like, yeah. you know, make a bunch of friends. So I'm very glad that I did when I, I, I got the chance to, you know, make all the connections that I did, thank God. Um, but one thing I think I'm really excited to see go away, I think would, I think, uh, the pace, the pace of life. I think myself and a lot of people that I know were living was was not normal. <laughs> it was too no. fast, <laughs> and the pace of the pace of demand, like the demand of content and stuff and stuff and stuff, like just churn, like just staying busy, just to stay busy, and just to say that you're staying busy, and just to churn out weaker things. And I think that goes for almost any industry, whether it be artistic or just capitalism and clothing. Yeah. I think that things were just in demand way too fast. And I think that just the pace of life, I think that the idea that that relaxing was like criminal, I think I'm, I you know, the guilty feeling of taking a break, I'm excited that that's kind of going away because now we all have to kind of exhale and take a deep breath and take a break and just talk. I'm I'm excited for not like life to go slower in general. I don't think that like you know, I, I do love the electricity of New York and the fast pace yeah. as I miss that. But I think that um the pace at which we were demanded to churn things out I think was a little unsustainable. Um and that goes for like everything. Arts, yeah, yeah. and like fast fashion and things like that. I think that it was a completely unsustainable way to live and it was not great for the earth, obviously, we can tell um, in many, many ways. And so I'm, I hope that everyone uh, takes this to when we move on to the next phase of life, that we kind of bear in mind these things and that we take things um, and do them more deliberately and more consciously and do more reflecting within how we consume things at uh, such a quick rate so we'll see yeah i i really hope like because if, even before i mean i've never been like a social media person or mm -hmm. like I, I i i don't believe that you have to share everything what you do unless you're getting <laughs> for it unless you know that's your job um, yeah but what i wish is like totally uh down there with you like after all of this is done that people would go back to the basics you know like uh, it is okay if you go on, on a holiday after a crazy work period. You don't mm -hmm. have to document every single goddamn sand grain <laughs> on that beach. Look yes. at look at the the um, you know the horizon and enjoy the moment because yeah. that moment is for you. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to be shared with everybody else. You know, mm -hmm. and you know I would wish that people don't feel the pressure that they're going to be judged if they're not seen in a this place or that place because the reality yeah. is that all of these people who are in these fabulous places they yeah. all have the same shit moments as everybody else you know yeah. it's like it, it's not reality mm -hmm. exactly well we are like we've we've uh scavenged 45 minutes now it's time to close yeah. the questions 
Yay! Before, before uh, we're up, so let's have a look. Um, first question, which artists, artist or artist, would you like to make a collaboration with? Uh, a photo shoot with Vesa, for example. Well, wink, wink. Well, <laughs> well, that's already been discussed, the photo shoot, but yes. it's like wearing different continents, so it's different. Yeah, um, we will have to revisit that one yeah, day. Definitely. It will happen. <laughs> but um, uh, at this moment, definitely uh, Rina Sawayama, the artist that I mentioned before. I am so obsessed with her new album, but also her um, visuals and just the entire creative around the album are really what like drive it home for me. But I think she's an extremely talented songwriter, vocalist, and just like the whole entire package. Also dance, I need her to teach me how to dance. <laughs> like <laughs> music videos like out of nowhere, like are just the dances are amazing. Um, so I, I would love to collaborate and not just like make a track, but like learn something from her. I'm, I'm so inspired by her new album and it just, yeah, it's like a week ago, but I'm already just, I, it's like the only thing I've been listening to, and yes, if you ever see this, please, I'm, I'll, I'll do whatever, any track. <laughs> well, let's see, like, you might just get a call at some point. I, I, I would be elated. <laughs> um, okay, so then the next question. Uh, what is the biggest positive you see coming out of this, like, as a whole? As a whole? Um, for myself or, like, the world? Just well, like, I, I think this is for general because we've, we've kind of tapped into the sort of personal aspect. Yeah. But how do you see this, like, as a, as a big objective thing, what is the, the, the great thing that you see coming out of this? I would say just that I can tell, and at least that, like, science has kind of shown, I think one good thing is that uh, a lot of the air pollution is dramatically gone down. I'm... I'm like with the lack of flights being taken, with a lot of the factories being shut down, I hope that some of the holes in the ozone layer can close up a little bit more. I think that we've seen such a dramatic drop. I remember when um, mainland China was completely like shut down for the time being that it was, there were all these reports saying like the toxicity of the air and the pollution in the air had like so dramatically decreased that like even satellites couldn't detect it anymore <laughs> like it was just so low so i hope that this is just like a breather from mother nature because again like i said we were living unsustainably like we were killing the earth and we still are in many ways you know just still living unsustainably but in ways that we could help i'm so glad that this is kind of forced us to just stop like consuming things in the way that we were consuming them so hopefully this just gives Earth a chance to breathe a little bit because I, you know, I, I just like, I don't know, people's kids can live on an earth that's yeah. sustainable and like, you know, I, I, we weren't going to have the same quality of life that we, if we had kept on going the way that we were. So this kind of made everything take a breath and reset. So that I'm very happy about, aside from all of the horrible yeah. Aspects my, of this. my mom has always said, said to me is like when I used to ask when I was a kid like why you know when there was like any type of natural disaster or mm -hmm. a lot of people died in like in bulk so to speak like yeah. a lot of people died. my mom would always say to me like I'm not a religious so maybe I'm new age there's some mm -hmm. sort of cosmic like the way that I think but my mom always used to say to me like that uh, mother nature will take care of the imbalance because I would always mm. like, so why does it happen a a massive, massive like avalanche or something in a highly populated area? Why doesn't it happen in a Finland, for example, where I'm from? Like, why doesn't it happen mm. here? So that was like yeah. maybe her way of like explaining to each other. Like, you know, see yeah. like this way. Like, if it happens, that means that there's too many people there. You know, I don't know. It just always gave me comfort, even though it's a horrible thing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things. Yeah, it is. It's the negative and the positive. I mean, it's it's terrible what this has done, and and you know, people are losing their lives. And I'm in no way in making light of that. But it is, I think, um, there there hopefully will be some sort of restoration to a lot of natural resources and things that you know we're also dying off. So I hope that, like you said, there could there can be a balance. Um, but it does also. It's horrible that people have to suffer, and I, you know. But but I yeah. mean, like, but for all of us, I think, like the the humans have evolved into these type of beings that they think that it's like, you know, 
it's a privilege to live forever. Sort of yeah. like, kind of weird that like this does not touch me. You know, it could be the yeah. same way I'm talking here and in two days I might have the virus and I might be on ventilator. Who the yeah. hell knows? I can't, you know, that the, this thing has like really, really, um, you amplified the sort of thing what I've been thinking a lot yeah, as in, mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, life and death. You know, you mm -hmm. start thinking about these when you get older. You know, I ain't no yeah. chicken anymore. So I'm starting <laughs> to think about these things. And like my mom said, like, you know, I have less, ahead of me than I have you know behind, behind. Yeah. and that's when you start thinking of us like yeah so yeah. in, in that in sort of sense I, I, I encourage everybody to uh, appreciate what you have don't take it for granted nothing mm -hmm. for granted okay so we, exactly. have not, we have nine minutes left so now it's the time <laughs> for the notorious notorious uh, speedway round but before we okay. go there my last question what is the first thing you're going to do when this whole thing is over? The first thing. It can be... Oh anything. my goodness. I mean, I guess it depends because I feel like there's so many, there's so many levels to over. Like, I feel like but there's like, there's like, like... The first instinctual, what is the first thing you're going to do? Fly right? somewhere and see my friends. I, mean, I if, if I have the money. I, I really <laughs> want to just like, I don't know where because now everyone's kind of scattered around so it's kind of tough. Um, but I, I want to see my friends. I haven't seen so many of my friends and I'm, it's like kind of been the longest I've gone without, especially, yeah, like I don't really have that many, I don't really have friends in Florida anyway. Like I'm social distancing. <laughs> I'm not like hanging out with people, but even if I was breaking the rules, I don't have like really friends on here. Um, so if, if all is well and I can, I'm going to get together somehow maybe like a meetup spot in the middle somewhere because I have friends in LA and New York and then some friends that have just gone home wherever that is. Um, so yeah, I just want to see, I want to see my friends. I want to dance. I don't know, even if it's not at a club because I yeah, yeah, doubt yeah. clubs will be over for a long time. Um, but yeah, somewhere just get a bottle of champagne and dance yeah, and see my are, friends. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely going to do the same thing as like, I just want to get dressed up, just get plastered. I don't care if I pass mm -hmm. in my <laughs> leather pants or crawl home, I don't care. Uh, okay, I'm going to put I'm a doing. look. Yeah, even if I'm at somebody's house, I'm going to get head to toe, I'm going to do my makeup up, and I'm, I'm going to dance until my yeah. feet and break. Like, whatever, decadence for, for that night. Okay. Exactly. Before we are cut off, let's go to the speed, uh, quick fire speed uh, question. So how this works is going to be, you pick one or the other, both, whatever, whatever you see best, just okay. pick something. Uh, okay. New York or uh, LA? New York. Uh, short or long hair? Oh God. Uh, sh short for me, long for everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, soul or jazz? Ooh. Both. I can't pick. They both uh, are I mean. Yeah, fair enough. That everything is uh, allowed. Uh, guitar or saxophone? Saxophone. Uh, plain or pattern? Hmm. Plain. <laughs> like plain. Uh, vodka or gin? Gin. Gin and tonic is my go-to. Amazing. Uh, southern fried chicken or ribeye steak? Ooh. <laughs> maybe maybe neither i don't love meat like that i Fair eat enough. chicken and i like i'm not a vegetarian but neither are like my favorite fair enough uh strawberries or blueberries blueberries uh freddie mercury or james brown oh my goodness <laughs> i can't both i mean they they both like i wouldn't i wouldn't be here without either of them so Oh. I think that was. Uh, blonde or brunette? Brunette. Still or sparkling water? Sparkling. Whitney or Mariah? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you will not catch me. No. Both. Both. Yeah. I, I, always, Both. I always say, it's like, when you believe, that's what I want for my answer. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, Disney or Nickel uh, Nickelodeon? Ooh, well, Disney owns like everything. <laughs> so I guess if, if one had to go, probably Nickelodeon, because I feel like 
Disney probably owns most things on Nickelodeon anyway. I feel like Disney's <laughs> has like National Geographic and all yeah, like, like I'm like I'm, I'm maybe like uh, more about like sort of animation because the cartoon you know, shows like Nick Nickelodeon is like Rock Rats and then yeah Disney is like oh I don't know because I'm I love SpongeBob I love SpongeBob and I I. I, I'd have to maybe go with both because they both. I really I was switching back and forth when I was a kid in the channel. Like, I, I couldn't just stick to one. I don't know because then Disney has to like Lizzie McGuire and I'm, yeah, I don't know both. Okay, fair enough. Uh, gold or silver? Gold, love gold. I look better in gold. I have all well, fake gold, but you know, gold nonetheless. <laughs> Amazing. That was my last uh, speed round question. We have just about like one minute and 50 seconds before we're cut off. So could you please tell everyone, how can we follow your progress? Where can we stream your music? All of that sort of info, you know, spill, yeah. the, spill the tea. Um, well, here obviously is my Instagram, Young Merlot. Um, I just made a TikTok um, that I'll probably be using more. Um, so that's Merlot Music. And then on yeah. Twitter, I'm also Merlot Music. Um, and then, yeah, I have new song and video coming out very, very, very soon. We're just doing the finishing touches on everything, and I want to get it out to everyone so they can have something to dance to in the house. <laughs> but I hope everyone really enjoys it. And yeah, you can follow that. Um, I'm on every single streaming service, so Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, Amazon, um, everything, even Napster. I didn't even know that, but I found that out recently. It's still on Napster. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so thank you so much. No pleasure. And then there's still the link before mm -hmm. we cut off. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the link on my stories later when I do a shout out. So go and check like the first ever music video and song that my lovely guest Merlo put out, which is one of my all time favorite songs. Still, thank you so thank you much. So I really much appreciate it. This. And uh, uh, I hope you stay safe. Yeah. Uh, all of your family and friends stay safe, and you have a lovely weekend. Release. Thank you, you as well. 20 seconds and we're cutting. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I didn't even know that they cut you off. It's so crazy. But yes, you as well. Stay safe. Everybody wash your hands. And yay. Yes. I know. I'm, I, Bye. I have a good Bye. one. Bye. Ciao.